What's up and welcome to Idol Insights, a show where each week I, Trevor Best, talk to interesting people about idol champions and Dungeons and Dragons. And with me this week are Jerry Holkins and Dave Allen. Hello, everyone. Ooh. Oh, no, I'm not supposed to cheer for myself. Uh, no, go ahead and cheer okay. for yourself. Yeah. You should absolutely cheer for yeah, yourself. Yeah, Jerry did it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And also, Dave is great. And apparently, you know, listen up, chat. Your boy Trevor here got the upgrade. Got that promotion. I, I I have I have moved positions. Yes, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm and, the content and designer. What it, content designer? Well, that know. sounds it's, very fancy. It's Trevor. very mystique. Like it's it's like ooh, what is, what does he do? What is what yeah? Is tell, me, tell, tell me tell me about this content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've heard right. that content is king. So that I mean that 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 must put you in a very good position. It, it does. It, it it is very fun. Uh, it, essentially, right now, if you read, eventually, when you read something in the game, I will have written it. But Hell yeah. We're not here today to talk about me. We're here today oh. to talk about y'all lovely folks and some awesome uh, uh, acquisitions incorporated things. But before we get to that, Jerry, Dave, who are you two for the fine folks who may not know? Oh, well, do you want it first, Job, or me? Uh, I think you, contextually, it makes sense if you're introduced first. Yeah, okay. Well, I am much much, uh, much like the, uh, the demonic legion referenced in the Bible. Um, <laughs> Uh, I am many. I contain multitudes. Let's start at the beginning. I regret my decision. I'm Jerry. You may not have this. Is going to take fifty minutes, so you may not actually we'll get part two have an week, opportunity. <laughs> no, but anyway, yeah, it's like obviously you know next week. No, um, I'm Jerry Holkins, IRL. But um, most of my career has been under various pseudonyms like Tycho Brahe of Penny Arcade and Pax and child's play but also uh, a minifus harroward drawn ceo of acquisitions incorporated a deeply pretend dungeons and dragons adventuring company um that it's entirely possible was there at more or less the genesis of what's now called live play and what you used to be were, called and what used to be called dorks <laughs> Um, you all were literally the first D and D show I ever listened to. <laughs> it's it is entirely possible that we we served that role um, for a few people, um, but but yeah, I mean that's that's more or less the the balance of it. We have a few other uh, cool projects that we've worked on, like the Ironwood Thornwatch. Um, there's you know there's there's a few other things here and there, but between Jerry Holkins, Tycho Brahe, and Omen Drawn, that's probably most of it. Like um, I work for a guy with like eight names, kind of like <laughs> Satan, the devil, Lucifer Morningstar yeah. kind of yeah. situation. Yeah, Lucifer um, Morningstar. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a real Sandman kind of scenario. Uh, I'm yeah. a senior designer at Penny Arcade. I do a lot of our merchandise that you might see around PAX. I'm actually wearing a D and D shirt we did uh, official with Watsy right now. Um, true. You Dawn also of the did uh, a book with Watsy. So oh yeah, that, that's yes. It. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as I know, I mean, outside, of, I would say that we're probably the first canonized campaign. But the truth is, you know, Greyhawk, <laughs> Eberron, like these were all, you know, they were all these uh, uh, Dragonlands. These were all just their campaigns that ended up getting um, elevated. It's true. Right. They, they're uh, ascended, basically. <laughs> yes. Right. So Back but maybe ascended. in the modern era, that's true. <laughs> Uh, I, I like a first time chatter in the uh, the chat right now. Uh, Ryan Hartman is awesome. Says you go first. I'll interrupt. Uh, <laughs> That's yes. Well, Ryan Hartman runs PAX, so he's he he cannot avoid the stage. He he must he must have the camera upon him. Yes. Uh, and someone else asked in chat, uh, Tre uh, Trevor, is this live? This is live. We are doing a live so. episode right now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can put your questions into chat for uh, for our two lovely guests. You can put it in with question colon, and then your question or awesome mods will grab it and put a little text doc that I've completely forgotten to open. And I'm going to do that at some point soon. Asking uh, questions in this stream involves your colon? <laughs> yes, it is does. Is that a plug-in? <laughs> It is an optional plugin. Yes. Horror. The, really yeah, we, 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 we really go Lovecraftian on this show. Um, <laughs> so so uh, I, I like to start things off of the show with uh, folks who've been on or on it for the first time with me, at least uh, with the icebreaker question. How did you all get into D&D? &D? Uh, Dornjorns and, and dragons. Yes. Um, yes, exactly. So my father was the eldest of 11 kids. And so what that means is that by the time my dad started having kids, 
his youngest <laughs> siblings were like not too far from me in age. They were closer to my age than they were his. Okay. Right? And so it was a wild ride. And uh, so sometimes I used to spend the night at my grandma's. We used to, um, you know, they had all these really amazing games. They had this crazy game. This is one thing I can say. They had this crazy game that they used to play. I think that if you have like 11 kids in the house, like you have to get really, really good at entertaining yourself. So this is like a big board game family. It's a big like puzzle family. But these are like a puzzle masochists. Like once I saw a thousand piece puzzle on the kitchen table at my grandma's house that uh, was of spaghetti. What? Uh, that's not the like scary zoomed part. in or like pulled out with a plate. Yeah, a little bit of plate around the edge. Oh my god! But the actual image was of spaghetti, and this is that's not the hate. The hate is that it was all square pieces. Oh, so this is like the Dark Souls <laughs> of family. Of course, starts rising as you pull her out the box. Family puzzle night, but they had this other awesome game that was like hide and it was like hide and seek, but you left clues. And what so, was it called? Uh, I don't know what they called it, but hide and seek with clues. Yeah, basically. But basically, the person who's hiding has a notepad, and they draw arrows and stuff on it. I've and so like you this. like find them in the woods after these clues. Like it's a pretty <laughs> magical game. But one other game that they had was played with. Um, it was just a series of books and weird dice. And um, I came home. It, it was, I mean, I can still remember the adventure. Like I can remember the imagery of it. And I was six. Like when I played it and when I came home, I told my mother what I had done and I got in incredible trouble because uh, what six, so that would have been in 1982. Mm. It was widely uh, understood that Dungeons and Dragons was a, a portal to uh, authentic de demon worship. I believe there was a documentary starring Tom Hanks about that subject. Yes, indeed, indeed. But uh, that was my first experience. And so um, after that, uh, we started playing, uh, you know, as I became a teenager, I realized I couldn't play that. I was just going to get in trouble. So we played a bunch of other role-playing games, and then we started playing Dungeons & Dragons in secret. Mm. Um, which, you know, nowadays, of course, seems very silly, but uh, at the at the time, it was more or less required. So... You you were in the rebellious days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going crazy with these pencils. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave, how about you? How'd you get into d, &D? Um, Honestly, it's through acquisitions incorporated live show at a pax west um just a recording of it i didn't i didn't i wasn't even aware i think i was at that show i want to say it was like 20, <laughs> i don't know 2011 or something a minute ago. oh no 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 sorry sorry 2014 probably anyway uh yeah so um i was so impressed and overjoyed to just kind of learn that you could that I, I'd, I'd heard friends talk about D, &D um, but i never like fully understood or try to get into it. So once I, once you effectively watch people play it and they're more or less improv comedians, it kind of changes how uh, you view that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, then my buddy Corey took me to a game shop in Portland and ran me through my first, um, you know, encounter and, and figured it all out. And uh, yeah, ever since just been really fascinated. That's awesome. I love it, and, and we got uh, we got acquisitions incorporated to thank for that, and that is, and we're we're here to talk about some of that today. So, what what is acquisitions incorporated? Acquisitions, acquisitions incorporated, uh, as previously hinted at, <laughs> is an imaginary company. Um, so whenever I whenever I role play, for some reason, it always ends up in the in the founding of a company of some kind. <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why that is the thing, but I mean, you can hear even in the very first podcasts, like I knew exactly what it was mm -hmm. right away and like named it basically instantly. The, yeah, uh, the fact that you start like I remember hearing that where you're like, I kind of like this company I idea. And then like maybe 10 minutes later, Perkins asks you and you're like acquisitions incorporated. Yeah, but it's true. Uh, and it's basically like because it, it sort of establishes like a framework where everybody sort of knows what's up and that's that's something we tried to communicate a lot of that in the um in the acquisitions incorporated book um it has a special thing they're not like classes they're not like in the class or like heritage consideration 
they're called like corporate roles mm -hmm. and all the corporate roles in that book they're just designed to make playing the game easier or more fun they just essentially it allows characters to break the fundamental rules of the game in various ways so long as they are employees in good standing with the company of course um but it's it is essentially the uh the brainchild of omendron whose backstory is gone through exhaustively um, in Acquisitions Incorporated, the C Team, which is a game that, of course, uh, Codename sponsored back in the day. We were overjoyed to have it. And um, Acquisitions Incorporated has a, a, a not insignificant uh, amount of its roster and more all the time inside um, Idle Champs. Yep. They've got like novel synergies with each other and something that I appreciate is that all of their mechanics like really reflect a, an affection for the characters. And I have affection for those characters too. Um, like Rosie and Walnut, like, I mean, these, there's, there's multiple outfits and stuff for them. Mm -hmm. Um, but they have really interesting, like, uh, the way they sort of distribute their benefits, like their character personality and how it relates to the mechanics of the game are really in there, especially for Rosie, I think. Like, I, th I think that's a really cool, it just, it's manifested inside the game, I think, in a really cool way. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathris was the the first champion I unlocked in the game. Uh, oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> uh, I, I've, I've almost always had a party going that is just Ak Inc. characters. But, uh, nice. And if there's a benefit, I mean, oh, yeah. there's a, there's a membership has its privileges. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. And, and as you're saying there, like uh, Acquisition Corporate has been around for a while. I think that yeah. those first episodes y'all record in 2008. 2008. Yeah, it was it was before like even fourth edition was like officially out. Yes, uh, yes. In fact, it was designed. It was designed because I think that they had, and you know, it turns out with some reason, they had, you know, perhaps some fear um, about how their role playing war game hybrid might be perceived or enjoyed uh you know by the by their traditional audience mm -hmm. i still have a lot of affection for fourth just because I, <laughs> I play you know i play a lot of tactical war games like uh, these days i think i might be more of a war gamer than anything else mm. and then the, the the games that i enjoy playing on pc tend to have a war game or tactics <laughs> component anyway i just that's what i like mm -hmm. and so you know if we're uh if we're trying to hybridize those two things, I, I think that it dropped the ball specifically around some types of skill interactions, some RP, like traditional RP stuff is denigrated. But I mean, a lot of times that just comes from the dungeon master and the players anyway. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of that stuff is you just sort of fill in, right? Yeah. But, uh, you know, between those two, uh, between those two things, it is possible to have a lot of fun. And but Dungeons and Dragons had another issue anyway, which is just that people had ideas about what the game was and what it would be like to play. But then if you see people actually playing it, that is obliterated instantly. Yeah. I think that people thought it was going to be very serious. I think that people had this idea that everyone was like sort of like hunched. They had like cowls and they were like <laughs> hunched over some kind of a salt exactly. circle trying to summon a devil. <laughs> together well that that kind of gets brought out in the episode too with with mike because i i'd still i still love that that is mike's first game like and it's mm -hmm. recorded i, I love mm -hmm. that folks some folks have that ability to go back and see or listen to that but uh but he didn't that, want to i mean that's yeah. and you can kind of pick up on that mm -hmm. at the beginning like he's not super interested in it yeah um and then he starts to realize that these spells you know which he's sort of mapping over like at that time, his primary experience with this kind of thing would have been like in a JRPG where yeah. these spells essentially have a specific combat function. But then he starts to use the spells as tools inside the role playing space. And that unlocked the game for him, that it was a simulated space that could be manipulated as long as everybody agrees. Um, you can play whatever game you want in there. And I think that once he realized that, um, he realized that, you know, as a person who draws and imagines things more or less as their job, I think he realized that there's actually a lot of fun to be had um, tweaking those systems with your friends. Yeah. And so we, we 
acquisition started back then and you've been doing live games and some series and stuff like that yeah. but now we're, we're, we're getting up to uh acquisitions incorporated series two and mm-hmm. uh that was announced uh towards the end of last year uh with the kickstarter happening Indeed. right now folks so you can go to kickstarter right now and check yeah. it out we're, we're gonna get to that but you can spoil it's still rolling it's still, it's still rolling. rolling um so so t- tell me wh- what is uh acquisition incorporated C- series two and how is how is the kickstarter going with it yeah the kickstarter so I was overjoyed that it actually funded because we because we had asked for a lot because we wanted to do it correctly. Like we've chosen a really fun, interesting local production house to us here called Color. We sort of know who we want to have at the table and it's incumbent on us, I think, because as you know, Mike and I have tried to make a living doing creative work for a long time and it's it is pretty denigrated as as something that you can do for money it's you have like the apex of it like in hollywood or something like that most people are actually just trying to um make ends meet and the reward is that they get to do creative work mm-hmm. right uh that uh <laughs> I, i'm not gonna do that and um this is a creator run company we want to work with other creators we want to make something incredible and i want to pay those people correctly and mm-hmm. so our ask was significant but uh you know, in advance of PAX East, um, with some tantalizing, uh, our uh, Ryan Hartman, as you saw in the channel, uh, he basically teased people and said, "Hey, if this if this stuff funds before PAX East, uh, we'll bring the C team back for a, a one shot." Oh. Um, and that that appears to have sort of pushed it over the pushed it over the edge. So now we're creeping up toward the first stretch goal, which is to have uh, Jasmine Bular, that bronze girl, who I'm sure you, you're familiar with. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good, good pal. We just did um, a uh, charity familiar with her. Yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly right. I, I saw it on her feed. Um, but she's like, I mean, we we work together on these projects, but she's actually like, we're actually like, cool. <laughs> and um, she is. Uh, if we hit that that next run on the Kickstarter, she is going to run a game uh, for Mike and I. So Jim, dark magic, Omen drawn and uh, our dungeon masters, uh, Jeremy Crawford and Chris Perkins, the, the monstrous amalgam (laughs) known as Jerris Crockins. Jerris Crockins. Um, But basically, so our DMS being DM'd by Jasmine, who is, just an exemplar of the form. A killer, a true oh, murderer. Yeah. Just a monster. <laughs> a and it, terrifying and it DM. And it doesn't matter the, um, <laughs> like it doesn't even matter the system. Like Jasmine is much, much more interested in the crunchy, like mechanics. When it comes to like a war game where everything is like fully laid out, I get very interested in mechanics. Mm-hmm. When it comes to something that we're all sort of agreeing on, I play fast and loose with that part because for me, it's the game is mostly about the interactions. But when we're both at the table, you get to have both of those, both of those things get represented, right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, as a dungeon master, she's a uh, an animal, and uh, and again, like does not matter the system. She just has a level of mechanical expertise that um, that reaches across multiple games game lines the historical versions of those games so playing with her is always a treat so i mean my fascination my fantasy um is that we'll have a chance to hit that as well but the main thing was to hit that base goal of 250 just so um you know that's all basically going out the door mm-hmm. like <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like yeah. the purpose of that is to make that's a, a break ep- even <laughs> the yeah. purpose of that is to make a great 10 episode show that will sort of fill in, add extra detail because nothing's happening to the live game. Because that was a question that we had heard a lot. We're like, hey, Mm -hmm. so does that mean no more live games at the shows? No, they're synonymous with PAX. Yeah. Um, They fill up that room. Yeah. Right. And so if something fills up a room, you should do it more. Yeah. And so with this, we wanted to have something that could add extra context, fill in, if possible, bring back some old friendly faces from earlier in the campaign because season two, as we sort of saw with the return of Chris Perkins at PAX East, um, essentially we had reached the end of a timeline. At uh, at PAX Unplugged, it became clear that while we had found success, the entire organization was a smoking ruin at that point. And 
uh, Jasmine inside Acquisitions Incorporated plays Omen's daughter, Certainty Drawn. Mm -hmm. And earlier in the campaign, she had received like a Feywild wish in the form of this stuffy. Did she get that from Dungeon Master? It's, it's, I think that Jeremy, Jeremy probably did something. In yeah, his yeah, there's, there's, yeah. <laughs> but essentially, she was, she wished to like reverse this and try to fix it. And the most auspicious thing ever was that he had her roll a d20 and then, um, and add one of the values on her sheet, uh, to see how many years we went back. And she rolled at that time. I mean, obviously in 2023, it's 15, right? Yeah. But she rolled the number of years to roll the campaign back to its inception. Oh, wow. That happened live. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's exactly what we did. We brought it, we brought it all the way back. And the hope is that we'll be able to found an organization that doesn't end in ruin. Um, but of course, that's probably not going to happen. And at that last episode, after you know omen's really significant heel turn around 2016 2017 <laughs> um he is now utterly sworn to asmodeus and he he believes he believes that he can outsmart the devil which also that's probably not going to happen either but but i'm i'm gonna do i'm gonna do my best and um i think that it's gonna make for a really great show I am extremely excited for. It. I, I I do understand folks' uh, concern about the the live show ones because at the, the oh, end yeah. of that episode when when Jerry's like, "This is the last episode." Oh, God, yeah. I can I, feel it. I, can I was feel it sitting on my there, scalp. I was sitting on my couch building like uh, the 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 Thanos snap glove, the, the Infinity Gauntlet uh, Legos, yeah. and I went, "What?" <laughs> yeah, I could feel it in the room. It was like the temperature dropped. I could feel it on my skin. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, no, no. I mean, uh, Pax Unplugged, Pax East. Pax West, all of that stuff, um, that's all there. And then at Oz, we do Acquisitions Incorporated as well, but we actually do a different, um, we do it in different systems. Once we mm. did Acquisitions Incorporated Star Wars, run oh, by Mike right. Rulick, yeah. which was really, really good. Like that old Fantasy Flight system uh, that they eventually sort of genericized in their um, Genesis book is one of the coolest it is one of the coolest role playing games I have oh. ever played, right? Because yep. you're rolling. Because uh, do you know? Do you know how this works, Bob? I I love this game. <laughs> I, I utterly love it. <laughs> have you ever seen it, Dave? What? You, what? Sorry, I was reading chat for a second. No, Star Wars role playing game. Oh yes, yes, yes. I did watch that. Uh, okay, that show. Because it's like it's divination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You're literally rolling the bones, and you're constructing stories around like the little mysteries that you find inside the tray <laughs> it's completely nuts but the last two have been really fun as well and uh our good friend uh chris straub who you might know from local 58 uh chainsaw suit brood hollow uh star slip crisis a, a staunch ally and a good friend for many years um he runs the the games down there for call of cthulhu Ooh, and so acquisitions one. incorporated has its own has its own lore in call of cthulhu that we haven't even we haven't even gotten into yet but uh because the the first two games were sort of establishing the tone establishing characters but i i cannot wait i think that it's i think that um we're doing really really cool stuff at every one of the shows but yeah we can't we can't stop doing it at the shows people like it too much absolutely they're they are a blast to watch yeah <laughs> Uh, Dave, I, I, I usually don't, uh, I usually leave listener or viewer questions for them, but I'm gonna bring one in here because the chat's curious. Lurking Writer says, question, Dave, can you speak on your role in the whole endeavor? Uh, what are you most looking forward to happening slash contributing to? You were yeah. saying the, the Kickstarter, correct? I believe so, yes. Uh, yeah, um, so I, uh, am responsible for the, um, the overlays that you'd see during, like, the C-Team games through the seasons. Um, so I imagine that we're going to be having a bit of uh, uh, interface to create as well as motion graphics and stuff to go along with that. And while we are having a full production team come in, I will definitely be overseeing that. <laughs> um, and I am excited just to be wherever we're going to be filming at. Yeah. Um, be doing like uh, BTS photography and everything just to kind of nice. have like a good 
um, preview for uh, all the backers and everything. Well, and they have, um, and they had hinted at a few things backstage when I was at East, just about some of their early ideas. Now that it's funded, um, they had a few really interesting concepts um, for what we could do um, cause there's, there's some new technologies that have become available just mm -hmm. here in the Northwest recently that they would love to take advantage of as well. But it, it should be said that, you know, acquisitions incorporated is part of a larger, um, presence that Penny Arcade has in Dungeons and Dragons broadly. And, um, Dave has been instrumental in creating the, the raiment, the sacred raiment, <laughs> um, for the true Dungeons and Dragons and magic enthusiast. His Kamigawa line, I, I saw that all the, over the place at East. Yep, happy with that. It was a um, really, really they, nice cyberpunk line. Uh, oh, if awesome. you've been paying attention to our uh, Twitter, you might have seen um, a certain image of a shirt that might not have looked official quite yet that has <laughs> many faces of Jerry on it, um, <laughs> as if he was a pro wrestler. Um, it looks so, like a, a shirt you would buy from the back of a truck. Exactly. Um, we want to sell it on a like a cardboard stand kind of thing outside of the venue. Um, so uh, I'd like to contribute a, a bunch of merchandise and, and kind of stuff like that to uh, additionally to kind of fill out uh, the lore and everything as as we're doing this reboot. I I love that as as from a fan perspective because one of the things that I, I've really enjoyed with acquisitions incorporated as it's gone on is like like, like when y'all did the 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 Neverwinter tie-in and yeah. there was the the headquarters is like don't forget to get your merch I'm like I would buy yeah. that <laughs> yeah and I, I wrote all that stuff too like we were we you know we handled a lot of the creative services on that mm -hmm. on that expansion and it's it's a really fun like if you're into Neverwinter like that quest line is really fun yeah and it has a lot of funny stuff in the items and um descriptions the 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 little uh um dark ride uh tour right i i've played that i think about four times now and every time i laugh <laughs> through popping it. out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so dumb it's so dumb but, but it's it, so it, fun it gets the feel of acting so well in there <laughs> you really feel like an intern <laughs> yeah, yeah we really we wanted that to be it but then it's also much sillier than neverwinter nights can be generally mm -hmm. and so hopefully it was a fun like shift like for the longtime enthusiast. And it was also really fun because when we had the team out to the office and we were talking about making the project, mm -hmm. um, we're like, here, it says, give me a full list of all the places that you have done adventures, places that you think people would like to go back to. And then we thought of the entire game that they had made up to that point as a series of sets. So we basically location scouted <laughs> virtual spaces, right? Yeah. And and said, let's make new content where you can come back to here and see it in a different way and have different activities and different um, jokes and voiceovers. There's a really crazy one about this giant where this giant has like all these itches and you have to like help him with these problems. But the giant was just, the actual giant was just like way off in the distance. You never had a chance to interact with him, but you could see him and mm -hmm. we're like, let's make that like a character. Yeah. <laughs> But they were they got they were so much fun to work with. It it, it was it was a joy to play through, uh, especially since the the voiceovers that like you all did the voiceovers yeah. that yeah, yeah. that was that was unexpected. I didn't expect that to happen. So when uh, you know I go over to one of the areas and uh, and um, oh my god, uh, Walnut Walnut's there yeah. talking with me. It was it was so cool. Oh yeah, that's the best part because Walnut is the one we send to their slums. Yeah. <laughs> And the deadpan delivery, I was like, yeah, nope, I'm here. Yeah, Again. exactly. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, and of course, that's our good friend, Tris. Yes. So yeah. any, anytime you have a chance to work with, with Tris, you're going to get way more than you put in, so... <laughs> Uh, Dave, I, I want to go back to uh, talk, talking about the overs because it actually did get called out in the chat that like your your overlays are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And for series two, like it, I, I I don't know if this is been sorry. Is this is this going to be a recorded show or is this a live show? Yeah. So episode. So the season two is going to be essentially like season one, in that it's going to be like a multi camera. Okay. Yeah, you know, multi camera setup, a set. It's 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 designed to be something that is going to be filmed and then edited down into essentially like hour long like tight hour long episodes Love so it. it's, it's it's designed to be it's designed to be something that you can you can approach that is like 
executed in a much more like intentional way. Like I, I love the live shows, but you can't, you just can't do the same types of yeah. stuff in it. Right. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. I, I have one other question, but first we have a giveaway to do chat. Oh. Uh, <laughs> our, our awesome mod Gabe is going to uh, put something, uh, put a keyword into the chat and all you have to do is uh, put that in for a chance to enter. Uh, you'll see it uh, in there. Uh, so if you're only listening to this, now's your time to click over to that window. Uh <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll run that for about two minutes, and then uh, you uh, will draw a winner, and you can win forty two chests of your choice. Holy a shit! Lot it's a lot of chests. chests. Forty two what? You could get forty two mm. omen chests right now. You could, and you should. <laughs> you could. And you, you should. should. Well, so, so Dave, the, the reason I wanted to talk about the overlays is because, like, I, I've done streaming producing uh, here and there, and I've made some overlays and whatnot. What does that look like for when you're doing a pre-recorded one? Like, what is what is the differences? <clears throat> um, so uh, you kind of have to start the project from a checklist of interactions and what people are going to be able to see. So for, like, the live shows, it's it's we, we were about – incorporating chat as much as possible. So we had the things like the cauldron, we had yes. like our cycling through the character sheets just because um, you're going to want to see that information anytime mm -hmm. it's referenced. Um, I without, love that you, you know, guys put up tab. the spells too. Like when yeah. someone's casting a spell, you have the D&D Beyond description there. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and like Walnut has like 16 different slides based on the shape that they are currently in, you know, oh, the, wow. as, a, as a druid. Um, so the it's going to be a lot more minimal, luckily, for for this production, since we're going to have, you know, a bunch of high quality uh, camera footage mm -hmm. uh, uh, the whole time. So I imagine that this will be pretty reduced, but will um, be necessary in like, I don't know, your basic lower thirds, you're definitely gonna have to display information on on screen, but we should, you know, come up with a cool way to display rolls if we're not showing actual dice rolls, just like, you know, displaying all that kind of stuff and, and, mm -hmm. and stats and just try to try to do it in a way that will keep people not wondering what uh, what the numbers are behind the scenes where they actually get to see that information. So it's, it's mostly just prioritizing that. But it's considered it's, it's essentially yeah. considered it's UX, <laughs> right? It's part of the user experience comes in there and the, and the user experience that um, user experiences that Dave has created in the past for it are actually very rich and characterful. So it's like, when he was putting those together, like for the final season of Ack Inc., like we talked a lot about what that texture should look like. And I mean, and that texture is based on things that are thematic in the actual season as well. Um, and so it, it's the actual UI that you're using that views that you're using to view the show through has things to say about the setting as well. Like, I don't know, Dave is very fun to work with. It's very fun. I appreciate the opportunities to get to do it. Yep. And yeah, there's like some fun Easter eggs kind of hidden in, in each overlay that uh, Jerry and I will usually have a discussion beforehand, kind of the direction of, mm -hmm. of things. And um, I think we kind of bounce off each other and in, in influence as far as that goes. Because yeah, effectively, if I lean into something really hard graphically, he's going to be more excited to like point that out when they get there or anything i mean this is actually the exact same this is the exact same relationship i have with mike frankly oh that's so, true um but also like sometimes i get to do text for the D, &D shirts as well it's true it's good yeah, times you, you, you've done you've done uh, quite a bit of copy recently on yeah, some I saw, unreleased dude, I, saw, I saw a bunch of the mimic shirts at east as well yeah mm. i'm really really happy with uh that line um we have six shirts now based on um uh, famous creatures, uh, monsters of uh, D and D, uh, and at the show we had the mimic Albert and the holder as the new Ooh. as the new shirts. Oh, um, the Albert one is awesome! I, I saw a lot of people wearing mimic, great. and I was really happy with that. I, I love the color scheme; it's very neon-y, <laughs> bright, bright pinks, purples, blues. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, the, the 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 what what Jerry was putting in there though about like the like the user or the the user experience of it, right? Like that is something that I do really enjoy about y'all shows because you know you bring up the spells, you have the character sheets, everything. Because there you you could just sit and watch uh, people playing D and D. Like like folks uh, have ones where it's just like them at a table, and that's that's all there is, and that is fine. But like there are times where I'm like, wait, what spell did they use? What did they what what did they roll and it having like the camera shots so above nice. with the giant d20s. <laughs> oh no no we love the giant d20s and I was overjoyed that 
basically during the reboot, very first game, brand new dice, the very first roll <laughs> is a one, which that's how I know things Perfect. are going. Perfect. That's how I know things are going correctly. But, you know, also I, I serve, you know, that settings version of the literal devil. So it's, you know, that's probably on me. This is the number I, of the I, beast. I feel is. like you feel like you're on track with a game if, if that kind of stuff happens live in mm -hmm. front of you. Like the, when Kathris his first dice roll, which was effectively a sanity check, he hits a one yep. and it changes how his character is perceived for the rest of the time that he's on stage or on screen. It's no, impressive. absolutely. And in fact, that so he already had. So as a warlock, is it OK if I talk about this, Trevor? Oh, yeah. Is it fine? Right. So oh, yeah. uh, as, as soon as you start talking about your characters, it's like, you know, it's, <laughs> I realize I'm asking you for something here and I appreciate that you're willing to extend it to me. But Kathris already had a character. Mm -hmm. Like they already built a full character, like in the Kathris Draub, I mean, his name is Chris Straub, right? So yep. the whole idea of the character it's a, self -insert. It's a funny insert yeah. that he had made during one of his introductions. It was never supposed to be a real guy. <laughs> oh God, I didn't know that. <laughs> but now, no, no, it was a joke. But Kathris Draub, when we put him on stage and had like a super good time with him, um, you know, he already had as a warlock, he already had a patron and he was already designed to do this. Right. So he mm -hmm. had sort of come up with a lore explanation for his patron and his character background. I took that one <laughs> and you know, what happens? He's trying to contact another plane. He's trying to communicate with something. And I made what he communicated with something very toxic mm -hmm. and caustic that usurps his own pact and we played out that one that he rolled on stage at pax we played that one out for three years that's wild right but that's the game yeah I mean, that's that's yeah. what the game offers and you know it, it's like the, the craziest version is that star wars thing where you're rolling a bunch of dice and then trying mm -hmm. to interpret it but every time that number comes up, it's like, it's not really mechanical. It isn't, it isn't systematic necessarily. If I'm supposed to roll a 14 and I roll a 13, that's still a miss. But as a dungeon master, I think it's incumbent upon you to take that information and work it into the game. Yeah. Right. Those thresholds are not mechanical outside of like actual 20s and 1s. The rest of it doesn't matter that much. Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated 20 sided coin that you're flipping, right? Yes. <laughs> but when those numbers are close, and that's why um, uh, my best friend on Earth, Mike Krahulik, um, you know, at his table, if you are one off, but you describe how you do it and you contribute to the game and the story, you can have it. Oh, I like that. It's yeah. a really I might steal that. That's really, really good. Really good rule. Right? Yeah. Wow. If yeah. you want to get a plus one, you have to put a picture into everybody's head that makes the game better. I and love that. Uh, who loses in this circumstance? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, well, and as someone who who uh, regularly rolls low or just one off, <laughs> I appreciate that one extra little little help there. These are <laughs> these are heroes, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, they're they're heroes, and the difference between them and everybody else is that they have a destiny yeah and that destiny allows them to thumb that scale and so i've always really liked that he has that in there i and that is a great way to describe it thematically for it like yeah these are heroes they, these are the ones who are changing the world uh that they're exactly in. exactly yeah. the world has favored them in some way exactly <laughs> Um, so we, we have we have a couple of uh, of uh, questions from chat here. Oh, I'm overjoyed. Uh, and uh, you can still put questions in there if you want. Remember, question colon then your question. Yeah, uh, put a question in your colon <laughs> because Trevor is weird. I guess yep, I am weird. That is well known here on this channel. Uh, let's see. Cassius three three five says question. Uh, uh, Pocket Paragons Ack Inc. Uh, was yes. the product of another Kickstarter that ended recently. Yes. Uh, what is uh, Pocket Paragons, and how can we uh, oh. get in a good word for seeing me with Solo Game oh. Studios? <laughs> it would be so Solus. Solus. That, that's my friend Chris Solus. Oh. Um, uh, that would that would not be hard at all. I wonder what. Oh gosh, you, they, you totally should because a lot of people have their um, they have their PCs in the game now. A lot of the characters mm -hmm. that you can get 
are actually played by real people. Oh, really? I'm I'm now googling this. I, oh, I don't, no, I'm no, not aware I mean, of this. I mean, I mean, in Idol Champs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like like my friend uh, Mark Holmes is, has got some sauce mm-hmm. in there. Um, I would be shocked if uh, Jasmine didn't eventually, outside of her charity creature, I'd be mm-hmm. shocked if she didn't end up with something cool in there. But Perkins obviously, is all- in there too, right? Hmm? Yeah, Perkins is in there as well, right? <laughs> we we do have spurt. We have yeah, spurt. Uh, we yeah. have a spurt character. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. There's lots of there's lots of characters in there that are from people's actual home games or characters that you guys have put together yourself. So, um, so there's lots and lots of games that are based around um, rock paper scissors as a concept. Mm-hmm. I mean, arguably, even an RTS game like Command and Conquer has a basic R, you know RPS. Mm-hmm. dynamic whether it's like it's ground it's troops versus tanks versus air i mean th- there's a few different ways that it 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 um filters out so pocket paragons every individual character in pocket paragons is really only six cards and it's essentially like a rock paper scissors plus game the difference is that um every character has a card they use to rest and a card they use to execute and so you can play a very sophisticated game against another person but again since you only have six cards and each time you use when it gets consumed Mm -hmm. for the most part and it gets consumed eventually you're going to need to rest to refresh your hand yeah and so the game you can either try to play the basic game and try to whittle someone's hp down or you can try to be there and figure out when they're going to (laughs) rest. And if I play execute, when you play rest, I automatically win. Hmm. Right. And so it's intended that you play multiple games, you know, over a sequence, right. Or you might, um, there is a, a more sophisticated version of the game where I choose it's like, like Marvel versus Capcom. I choose three characters. And then when you take one of them out, I put one of my other characters in, but I can take one of the characters, one of the cards from the defeated character and put that oh, in my deck. Oh, okay. But now that I have a sense of how you play, maybe one of those cards I think might be a good addition. That is so it's, it's probably the best <laughs> con line game of all time. Huh. Where the basic mechanics are fun. They're simple enough for anybody to learn and get and feel like they're actually playing the game soon. But then it, on top of that, it has this 3v3 mode that's a little more gamery right it ha- where i'm choosing those three characters and then we're battling three characters against three characters oh, like wow it is it's genius and so i discovered it uh a while ago uh at uh, one of the pax shows and i just advocated for it very very strongly and then when chris was like hey can we can we you know bring the designer in can we work on an acquisitions incorporated set um, and that's that's what ended up being in the in the Kickstarter. So now that's there's awesome. a box that has AI, yeah, tons of AI characters that you could play these three v three or these one v one matches with. But it's legitimately special. And if you play games on a tabletop simulator, oh. there's a pretty robust there's a pretty robust Pocket Paragons mod in there that has lots of like the best TTS mods. Like it sort of plays like a video game. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's definitely worth checking out. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, please that, do. That sounds really good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna get one more question. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna get two questions. One of them is from Garwar that says, "Question, uh, J- Gara, J- Jerris Crockins and Idol Champions win." I don't know <laughs> if that will happen, uh, but what? you know what? Who knows? Listen, obviously, Jerris Crockins is one of our most powerful IPs <laughs> at um, Penny Arcade, and you know we're just we're always trying to find ways to exploit Jerris Crockins. <laughs> You know, as a well, see, we, as we an have, exemplar, we have a show uh, on the channel called Sketching Hour, where we take a D and D creature and then like yeah. a, a real world cute creature and then like a concept and throw them all together. I I kind of want Jairus Crockins in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm telling you, like it's this is a powerful it's a powerful brand that's set to take the world by storm, basically. <laughs> so Love consider it. that. 
Uh, the last question is going to be the looking writer who says, uh, question, Dave, uh, do you have a D&D character or characters, and would you ever play them online? Follow on, would you like them to be in Idol Champions? <laughs> I would, of course, want them to be in Idol Champions, and we'd have to do a very big discussion beforehand. You know, I want to make sure that I'm an auto-include. Uh, well, you've, sure. you've played more Idol Champs uh, than anybody at the office. Yeah, that's 100% true. I was I hopelessly addicted for years and it was <laughs> it started up when my computer booted um and no, I have you I had have it set. taken a break. <laughs> you had so it set I, I to, you looked. had it set to unload. Are, Are you yeah, serious? That's yeah, awesome. Was, that he was awesome. nuts. Yeah. Um uh and I and I loved so much about it and I haven't even played like an idol game since I like installed a few and it's like, this isn't it. Uh, I'll just go back to idol champs if it's time. So it might, it might be time soon. Uh, mm. I don't currently actively have a game of D and D going with the character. Uh, I'm playing mage with my, my buddy Patrick at dog food studios. Oh, okay. uh, we have a little mage YouTube show the, going. I love mage mage of sale. Uh, and it's really great. Holly Conrad's on that with us as well. Nice. Uh, so, um, yeah, one day that that one sounds day. great. I want I want to be in there. I want to be in. I want to be the auto include. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we we got to start wrapping things up because we got another show after this, and oh. you know, it's the it, it's the it's the owner show. I don't want to make them mad. Well, um, no, absolutely. But I'm just boring. saying, like, this was the fastest like 46 minutes of all time. <laughs> like, anytime you want us to, anytime you want to, you know, discuss stuff, this is clearly a format that works. <laughs> If we got if we got another blank spot in the schedule we'll hit you, you let me know yep uh but but uh where where can people find the two of you on the interwebs if they would like to do so oh well i mean you can take a look at pennyarcade.com penny-arcade excuse me it's a website um it's online <laughs> it's a it's a web um you can come check out the new site if you want um of course at pax shows you will see dave you most likely see his his camera and the long lens <laughs> Um, looking right at you uh, in front of it but Dave and I uh we tend to stream on Fridays now tomorrow since we're wrapping up the Kickstarter we're doing something separate but Dave and I typically stream from 10 a.m to 2 p.m on Fridays the Friday stream Mm -hmm. um and sometimes we play games with chat uh sometimes we mix it up but it's mostly like a variety thing but it's mostly chill vibes very very good way to head into the weekend for sure um, but yeah, I mean, outside of PAX and the, the live shows and the streams, like, actually, if you are a super dork, um, let me tell you about what happens on Tuesdays. So oh, on yeah. Tuesday at noon, we operate a very strange program called Acquisitions Intoxicated, <laughs> which is a brewing show. We can teach you some basic brewing concepts. We brew live on stream. We also try the, the products uh, of the brewing um, from our in-stage bar, um, and then starting at two thirty, uh, right you know right after that show that goes from noon to one thirty, uh, starting at two thirty, we have a live play game that does things a little bit different called Black Remnant. Mm. That is a BattleTech game where that the uh, obviously the role playing occurs much as you would expect, but anytime combat occurs, we use the stripped down. Battletech system Alpha Strike. So it's a war game role playing game um, that we do Tuesdays. That's awesome. Take, take a look at it. You might enjoy it. I will. It. I will. Uh, Dave, what about you? Where can people find you? Uh, on those streams, I'm also streaming on Mondays on the Penny Arcade. Oh, yeah. Arcade. You, you and Gav. Like noon. Yeah, we do uh, puzzle games. Um, I, I think you can probably best see my uh, work on uh, Twitter. I, I luckily got in early. I'm at Dave. Um, love those four character usernames, uh, and on Instagram at Dave underscore Allen, um, usually try to post, uh, my PAX photos or any work projects and merch and stuff, uh, on those channels. I, I did check out your Instagram there that, I mean, the first thing I heard about you was photography and that is exactly what, what was in there. And I, they were fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, thank you both so much for joining me. Uh, oh. Chat, stick around uh, after the show for a quick little news announcement, and then ooh. Dev Insights will uh, follow ooh, immediately ooh, after ooh. that. Uh, but again, thank you too for taking the time to talk with me today. This was an absolute blast. Anytime, man. And obviously, congrats <laughs> on the uh, uh, on the promotion. Thank you. That I'm not gonna lie that like it already felt weird to like have this role, but like Drew Holkins is congratulating me on it. That's yeah. This is a weird day for me, so thank you yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, you're. I'm, 
it's okay. You're kicking ass. It's all right to feel good about it. <laughs> no, that, is a, that is a feeling I'm getting used to. Yeah. Uh, but that is going to do it for this week's episode of Idle Insight. So until next week, take care of yourself. Indeed. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to a, a weird little section for the news. Um, I'll explain that why later. But hey, we have a new champion coming to the game next week, and the champion spotlight is launching right now. Uh, Antrius from the Deerstalker Pictures Awful Ones, a, a one for all group, uh, is coming to the game. And you might be wondering, why are we launching a champion spotlight at this time of the day? Well, that's because they're actually from Australia, and we wanted to launch it uh, on a Friday for them. And so you all are getting it, I guess, early, and they're getting it on time. because time is weird that way. Uh, you can check out the uh, the Champion Spotlight blog that we have up on our site right now, but also you can check out the Champion Spotlight video on our YouTube uh, now as well. And uh, I, I think uh, you all are really going to like this champion and how ridiculous they are. So please go check those out. Uh, and uh, I hope you look forward to playing Antrius uh, next week. And uh, I guess an interview next week too, because that's how these things work. <laughs> so uh, please be excited and uh, we'll uh, talk soon. Right. Bye!